In this lecture, we're going to talk about the alphabet. Now, the basic uh, goal of this is just that, to learn the 22 letters of the Syriac alphabet. Now, just a word of caution before we get started. Generally, this is probably the hardest part of learning Syriac. Uh, back when I was learning my biblical languages, my uh, professor who uh, was teaching me Hebrew said that generally Hebrew is sort of reverse of Greek. Greek starts off kind of easy, and then by the end of it gets a lot more difficult technical, where with Hebrew, if you can just learn the alphabet, then the rest of it seems like it kind of goes a little bit smoother. And so the same thing is true with Syriac. The letters are going to be, well, if, if you're familiar with Hebrew or Biblical Aramaic, the letters will be exactly the same, uh, as far as, well, almost exactly the same in the case of Hebrew, but uh, they'll just look a little bit different. So the, the names will be generally nearly or close enough to identical. Uh, but if you're not familiar with Semitic languages, then this will probably be the hardest lesson. Uh, it'll take, on your part, probably flashcards. Um, just, just like with any language, seeing it over and over and over again so that you can recognize what the letters are without, um, without too much thought is, is going to take a little bit of work, but it's definitely probably the most crucial part of learning this language to avoid frustration later on. If you're constantly going through and having to say, oh, what's this letter or what's that letter, uh, it's going to add to your frustration in learning the language and, and to the difficulty of learning it. So it's important in this chapter especially to put a little bit of extra work in to make sure that you can recognize the letters very easily. So let's go through the 22 letters real quick. Um, I'm going to fly through them decently quickly. Uh, just so that we can, um, you can see him, you can hear how the name is, is pronounced, um, and, and we'll talk a little bit maybe about writing them. But generally, um, if you have to pause it at some point or, or go back, feel free to, to do that. So the first letter that we come up is Alep. So Alep, uh, coming across is one of the few ones that it doesn't necessarily have a, it needs a vowel to make a sound. It doesn't have a sound, so it doesn't make anything on its own. The second letter is bet, and this makes the B sound. Next letter is gamal, which makes the G sound. And in general, if you notice the pattern, if you're not familiar uh, with Semitic languages, usually the first sound that's made with the letter is the sound that the, the actual letter itself makes. So if you're looking at the English spelling, it's a nice way to kind of get a feel for it. So the next one is dalat. With the D sound. Then we have he, wa, zain. This next letter is chet, and this one is distinguished because the it has the rough H sound. So this is the sound that most people, when they think of Semitic languages, they sort of associate it with this sound here. And when you're making the pronunciation, just remember to make it real rough, sort of in the back of your throat. Chet. Moving on, we have tet, which is the T sound. The next letter is yud, kap. Now you'll notice here that there's two different forms of kap. We'll go over why this is later. But if you're wondering why, there's, there's actually two letters written here on this slide. So just kind of make note of that. Lamad. And again, we have two forms of mim. And nun, where we also have two forms. Next, we have simkat, which is another S form, or the first S form that we'll see. Then this one is hard to pronounce. Now this is in the way back of your throat, almost like you're choking. So it's eh. So you kind of say it sort of like if you see something you don't like and you go eh. It's sort of like that. Now when it's a lot easier to pronounce in words. Uh, it's just when it's by itself, it's sort of hard. So just remember, um, it's almost like uh, choking on the back of your throat. And we have pe. Sada, which is another S form. Now this one, um, the, the distinction for right now, as you're getting going, uh, learning your Syriac, the, the distinction is, is very nuanced between Sada and Simkat. Um, it's sort of a, it's, it's mostly, well not mostly, a lot of it's an, an inflection. For just getting going, I would recommend you just classify both of them as S's at this point. And then later on, we can, uh, 
you'll start to see the nuance or you can develop the nuance, but just for, get, just for getting going, um, same thing with tet and tau. Just see those as, as two T's. Um, so it'll just make your life a little bit easier. Next we have kop, then resh. Next we have shin, and this is different from Biblical Hebrew in that there's only one form of this letter. There's not a sheen and a seen. This is just a sheen, just the SH sound. And then the last letter that we have is tau. So 22 letters and memorizing them, especially in order, can be difficult. Now you'll more than likely be working with a lexicon at some point. Uh, in your Syriac journey, and so all lexicons are in alphabetical order. And things like numbers, the numbering system, uh, depends on having to know the order of the alphabet as well. A lot of things, a lot of things is just, you need a practical way to memorize the alphabet. And I have seen this a few different places um, in Syriac. It seems like a pretty popular way to memorize it. Here are a few different, well, here's pretty much the whole alphabet strung together if you look down at your screen. Now these words don't mean anything. They, they don't have, there's, um, you know, it doesn't translate. These are completely made up words. But until very recently, they, this is how I, this is personally how I would, you know, going through a lexicon would just say these. these. So um, looking on the screen, you have them again from right to left. You have Abgad, Hawaz, Khati, Kulman, Sapas, Karshat. So one more time, Abgad, Hawaz, Khati, Kulman, Sapaz, Karshat. And then that gives you a basic idea of at least, is it a, a, you know, am I looking for like a Dalat, let's say. Well, you say, okay, well, what's the first one is Abgad. Oh, Abgad, the Dalat is in there. You know it's at least generally in the beginning of the alphabet. With anything else, you'll become more familiar with it. But this is a great way to start memorizing the order. It's a really, really handy tool. Now, when you're writing in Syriac, Syriac is a, a cursive, um, cursive font in that you won't be picking your pen up from the page very often, generally. Now, as you get going early on, you'll probably be picking your pen up a lot. Like, don't, don't say, well, I'm just gonna try and, and make these as fluid as I can. Uh, it's sort of survival at the beginning when you're just writing a new language, and then you can kind of develop your technique. But in that it's a cursive font, there are a few letters that break. Uh, if you look down on your screen, here, you have these letters, Dalat, He, Wa, Zain, Sara, Resh, and Tau. Now, uh, probably I would say the most helpful thing when you're looking at uh, this cursor font is the Wa, because the Wa is gonna distinguish from the Kop. You know, the Kop and the Wa look fairly close to one another, except that the Wa is not written continuously. And so there might be a few times if you're looking at a text and you're trying to say, is this, oh, is this a wa or, or is this a, um, this is a cop? I don't know. Um, you know, it'll give you a kind of a hint, kind of a clue to say, oh, okay, this, this is a wa, you know, W or, or, or a Q. So uh, keep that in mind. The rest of them, uh, generally, they're, they're good to know. You'll, this isn't like a chart that you'll have to memorize because really after reading it for a week or so, it, it'll become natural to you, but do, do uh, take note of that wa, because that's, that's saved me on a few times personally when I was trying to figure out, oh, what's this word? Uh, and it's just a hint to, to help you out. So when we looked through the alphabet, there were a few letters that had final forms, initial forms, and some of them had medial forms. So let's take a look at those individually. So the first one that we came to was the cop. So this, this, uh, chart that I've made up has them all cop, meme, and noon together. Now, the first initial or slash medial one, that just means it can be at the beginning or the middle of a word. You'll see that it's written just sort of like with a, almost like a bit that's a little more rounded. So that's the initial or the medial. Now, it's not written continuous. The, the, the letters that are continuous really have a natural flow from right to left. So anytime that you look like at that cop and it has a break, you'll know that, oh, that's not a letter that, that is gonna flow from the right to the left of it. Then if you look to the right, you'll have the final K. And it's sort of a hard letter to describe. It's, it's right at the end. Uh, and this is actually, you'll see this quite a bit because it's the second masculine singular 
a pronominal suffix. That's a way to say your, like so, like your I, for example. Well, you're gonna add a cough at the end, um, and so you'll see it's it's sort of like a. It almost looks like a um, like a sada almost, uh, but just sort of turned up. So it's a little bit difficult to write. Requires a little bit of practice. So next we have the meme. So if you'll notice down here. This is actually a medial meme in that it's in the middle because it comes right after the initial wa. Now this word mekda would look the same whether it had that wa in the front or not. So the first letter after the wa, after that circle letter, is the meme. And you'll see how it's a little bit more rounded than the meme that is on the right or in the final column, which is the word kam, or he got up. So that one is a final meme, and generally they, they look almost identical. The initial or medial one is just a little bit more rounded. Then the last one we have is noon. So noon, you see in the middle of enna, and that's a word that you're gonna see quite a bit. That's the uh, first person pronoun. You'll see after the alap, you have that little that line that's moving up and down, and that's the initial or medial noon. And you'll see that that looks very different than the word to the right of it, which is another one that you'll see quite a bit, men, which is the preposition from. So uh, it kind of drops down, the one on the left or on the right drops down a little bit uh, below the, your kind of your signature line there and is quite a bit distinguished from the initial or middle noon from in the, on the left. So like with biblical Hebrew, we have hard and soft pronunciation on a certain set of letters. Now, exactly like Biblical Hebrew as well, these are known as the Bagad Kapat letters, which is a way for us just to remember which letters they are. So you have a bet, gamal, dalat, kap, pe, and tau. Both can have either this hard or soft pronunciation, and it's distinguished by having a dot either on the top or on the bottom. So if there's a dot below one of these letters, it's gonna be a soft pronunciation. The, dif the, dis the difference between hard and soft being for, as in bet, for example, a hard would be bet, like a b, and a soft would be like a v, like a vet, if you were to use the same, the same word. So if the dot is below the letter, you're gonna have the soft pronunciation. If the dot is above the letter, then you're gonna have the hard pronunciation. So all of these, here's what they look like. If you look on the screen, there's a chart. For a bet, for example, as we said, you have a B or a V sound, and it goes through for, for gamal. It can sound sort of, it's, it's not quite like a J. The J is a little bit um, probably too emphatic, but it's just it's maybe like a, like a GH or a GE, just a softer way. It's not a hard, not a G, not a very distinguished sound. Or you have d, dalat, for the um, for the hard or d. So it's it's uh, again you're not um, it's almost like like a non-emphasis sort of on it. And going through uh, the other one that's probably the most the most uh, I guess distinguished besides the bet is the pe, because you have a p or sort of like an f like f. Um, or the the tau as well where you have a t or a th. So it'd be like th as in this, or t as in tree. Um, so these are, these are very important to pay attention to in, in pronunciation. Uh, again, it's one of those things as you get going initially, uh, I would recommend that you, that you sort of note them, but especially as you're beginning to learn the, the, the vocabulary of what the alphabet is and what sounds that they make, um, that you make the distinction in, in your mind, but focus more importantly on what the actual, just the basic sound of the letter is. And then once it becomes easy for you, go back and start to look, okay, is this a bagat kapat? Is there a dot above or a dot below? And it'll kind of nuance your pronunciation. So uh, one quick note on transliterations, especially within this book, is just as I said, I'd, I've tried to simplify things as possible. So. Um, one thing in particular is I know that I won't have any hard or soft pronunciation marks, um, as well as schwa marks. 
in there. So if you're familiar with biblical Hebrew and, and uh, these sorts of things, you might, you might say, hey, well, is this hard or soft? Uh, I know that it's, it's a little bit, um, might be challenging to get, to get used to initially if, if you are familiar with the language. But uh, getting going, and especially early on, I've, I've simplified the transliterations a little bit just to include the basic, um, the basic words. So for example, if you look on the screen, this is a, this is a word that you'll see quite a bit, kataba. So the actual transliteration, you see there's the soft mark, uh, breathing marks. So really it'd be kthava. Um, but the difference between those two isn't as, as distinguished. And so in the grammar transliteration, we just leave them as a, the simple kathava. And then, um, and then, but as you read, if you'll notice, the Syriac will have all of the rough or soft breathing included in it. So make that note as, as you go through. But just early on, don't, uh, don't, don't, you know, don't die on that hill, I guess. Con just continue to, to know the basic meanings of what the letters are. So in Syriac, there's a special group of letters that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. And the reason that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to will be very obvious later on in the grammar. But at this point, just know that these, these react in a specific way when it comes to vowels. And these are called the guttural letters. So with the guttural letters, we have alam, he, chet, e, and resh. Now, with, outside of the alap, the he, chet, e, and resh will distinguish themselves because they take specific kind, or they like specific kinds of vowels over others. So, for example, in the verb section, when we start parsing verbs, there's gonna be a, a couple times when the vowels won't quite match up. And generally, the reason why is we're gonna, gonna be because there's one of these guttural letters close by. So, early on, just don't have to remember too much with them, but kind of put an asterisk by them in your mind and know that later on in the grammar, knowing this particular group of letters is gonna come in handy um, while you're doing parsing. So finally, to recap, let's read a little bit of these, uh, just going through to see what it sounds like. So here we have the beginning of Matthew uh, chapter one, verse one. So. If you read from right to left with me, starting at that kaf, we have ktava, diledute, de Yeshua. Now that name should sound pretty familiar, Yeshua, that's Jesus. And then after that, the next one, the last one on the top line, we have Meshicha, which is so Yeshua, Meshicha, is how you'd say uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah. Bare, de duid, bre, de Abraham. So son of David and son of Abraham. So this is sort of how it looks when you're looking at a Syriac text. You can see that, you can see the cursive really start to, to show through. You see how, for example, in that initial ktava, we have the tau not being connected. The second letter is not connected to the third letter, to the bet. You have some letters which connect right to left, some which don't. For example, if you look at Meshicha, the, the last letter, the last word on the left of your screen on the top, uh, the top line, you see that Shin in there is connected on both sides along with that Yod. Um, so it's, it's, really a, it's really a cursive, linear kind of, kind of way of writing. It's a very beautiful font. It's one that you're gonna have to get used to uh, but make sure that you take the time to invest, especially in this chapter and, and the next chapter on vowels, in putting the time in to really learn these. This is going to make your journey in Syriac a whole lot easier as we progress through the grammar.